Hi, I'm Ralph. I love the game of football and I love the work I do as a football coach. Over the years, I've had the privilege of seeing the positive impact that sport can make on people's lives and none more so than the refugees that we welcome to our club. I have to admit that when I first started encountering refugees, there was so much that I wasn't aware of. Did you know that the number of forcibly displaced people worldwide is 68.5 million? and 25.4 million of them are refugees. The country that welcomes the most refugees is Turkey with 3.5 million, followed by Pakistan, Uganda and Lebanon. The whole of Europe hosts around 14% of the world's refugees or displaced people. For me, sport offers a universal language. I've seen its ability to bring us all together firsthand and it gives me great hope for the future. But when it comes to working with refugees and helping them to integrate, well, I definitely learned a few lessons and approaches that I think would be good to share. I remember the day that a new child, Jamal, arrived at our club. He had a big smile on his face and I was so enthusiastic to tell him all about our club and how he could get involved. But as I started to explain, that smile was quickly replaced with a look of sadness and confusion. I had the idea that there was a language problem, so I called over my friend Ibrahim. I knew he could speak Jamal's language, and together we took the time to translate my words. The smile soon returned and Jamal got off to a great start. Having someone available to translate isn't always so easy, so another thing I've learned is that it can also help to have a pen and paper on hand. If you can't say it, you can get a long way by drawing it. A little investment in communication can have a really positive effect. I remember that time when a small boy came along to play. His name was Dinka. He tried to play football to show me his level, but he was only starting to learn football and just developing his skills. So I started to show him some techniques, just to give him some basic skills. He tried hard and he enjoyed it a lot. As most coaches know, it's so important to adapt your session to people's level, or find a level in the team that's right for them. Once when we were celebrating and eating, I saw Sadika, a girl with a hijab, looking very disappointed. She told me that she could not eat certain food because she was Muslim. I showed her there were also some halal sandwiches. I also showed Siddika that the structure of our club, there was a quiet place where she can pray if she wished, without being disturbed. It's important to think about who is involved in your sport. Sometimes I was so curious about the history of people and I asked a lot of questions concerning their journey here, their families and so on but sometimes people just didn't like to talk or to think about their past experiences and it's better to communicate in other ways. I took a ball and started to play with them so our connection was improved. While we were playing football I noticed that there were a group of ladies with small kids just watching. I realised that I needed to help them and I called my friend Laura and Yasmin. Laura started organising a sports group just for women and Yasmin created a parallel group of activities for their children. As sports people, we cannot do everything, but we can help, at least, with support of some professionals. I saw a guy crying in a corner, and I came to him to give my support, but I quickly figured out that it was not my role, and I could not help him. Binta is a psychologist and an expert in post-traumatic stress disorder, and she approached him successfully. Sometimes there can be differences that affect training or building a team. This can be difficult. For example, not all people are used to respecting training timetables or listening to the coaches, wherever they come from. Often these challenges or differences can be resolved by talking about what is expected. For some refugees, the challenge of reaching your club venue can be very difficult. And for females, it is often not safe to walk alone at night because refugee centres are often far from the heart of the town. Sometimes refugee centres or NGOs can organise travel in groups, which might be more comfortable. Now, my dream is that when I grow old, some of these guys play my role. 
Mrs. Ineas, and she will, I am sure.